what's up guys it's kiana and welcome back to my channel or welcome if this is your first time seeing my face <laughs> low-key give up with YouTube like I don't <clears throat> care to like make this I feel like a lot of people like years ago went into YouTube and wanted to be like creators and make a living off of YouTube but that's not really why I ever started it I started it way back in the day with my friends because we wanted to entertain people and it was back when there were, when YouTube was a whole different version of what it is now my only reason for being on YouTube and even being on the internet even though I'm not even like anything big or that anybody pays attention to but the reason why I want to be is to spread awareness for mental health and share my experiences and my journey with my depression and my struggles with mental health I did film bits and pieces of Christmas Eve I did not film Christmas because it was just a really strange weekend for me and I just didn't end up getting any footage on Christmas Day. I worked Christmas Day. I came home, opened my gifts with Michaela, which is my best friend if you didn't know. And then we kind of just spent the day together, but it was just a really weird day. And I just don't want to get into it. I'll show you a couple of the things I got. I mean, I'm grown now. I don't really get Christmas gifts. But I got a couple things and I just want to share what they are. So first in my stocking, I just got some Extreme Airheads. Some Reese Thins. This little like Santa candy bar thing. It's not really focusing. <laughs> some hot Cheetos. I had some fuzzy socks in my stocking, but I've already worn them. I don't know where they are. This is my stocking. Cute little like sweater thing. And then Michaela got me this phone case. So this is from the anime One Piece, which is so funny because I'm not really into this anime. I'm into anime. But I even got my Nezuko shirt on. But One Piece, I started to watch with Michaela like a couple years ago, and I just like wasn't into it. But I love the character Brooke on there. I don't know why. The newer seasons are way better. I got stuck in the middle of the show, and I was just like not a fan. My room's a mess. Please ignore it. Um. But yeah, so I got this phone case, and I love this phone case. It is so cute, and it's my favorite character from her favorite anime. It's so funny. The other thing I got is this um, bead spinner for my bracelet making. I actually asked for this, so I was really happy when I opened it. I was not expecting Michaela to get that for me because I just never even thought she would even know to, to get it. But I'm very thankful for the little trinkets and stuff I got. I wasn't expecting anything because I'm grown, like I said, and I don't really do Christmas like I we used to. I went all out for Michaela because she's just really fun to shop for because she's like really gets really excited and I know her so well. Other than that, I don't really do Christmas that way, that much. <clears throat> My main reasoning for coming on and filming this video is I really want to do a mental health update. My channel is supposed to be about my mental health journey and a lot of times I will film a mental health update and leave it out because I feel like I'm just, it's just, I don't have a very good way of verbalizing my emotions or feelings without it sounding like narcissistic or like I'm trying to cry for attention I feel like in on the internet every body takes everything everybody says and twists it into their own version of what they want it to be and I'm just afraid of that happening instead of sending a good message I feel like it's going to get twisted so sometimes I don't share what I want to share but I'm just going to cut to the chase today is the day after Christmas December 26th Monday and I've been um, in my head a lot emotionally Christmas is hard for me because as a kid, it was the most magical thing ever in the world for me. And I really, really miss being a child. That's one of the reasons why I'm in my head a lot around this time of year, but it's a very small reason why. Another thing is the past few years, losing two of your best friends a year apart, putting your dog to sleep, going through a relationship, and then just all these crazy things with a friendship. I mean, there's just been so much that I've gone through the past three years, actually five years. I mean, there's just so much. And then entering nursing school this year, not doing as well as I wanted to do, but I'm still in school. Don't worry, I'll get to that at the end. 
there's just a lot going on. I'm not a very good, I'm not very good at processing my emotions. I react to everything as it's happening and, and people like to say I overreact. People like to call me dramatic. People like to call me a crybaby and I used to let that get to me. I used to, and when I say used to, I mean like three days ago. <laughs> I'm just trying really hard to not let other people's words or reactions to my emotions affect me. A lot of people try to make me feel bad because of how I react to things because I get emotional. I share all my emotions out loud and on my sleeve. There's a lot of people in the world that don't do that and those people don't always understand the people who do. I could never bottle anything up. I, I can't, I just cannot. The thing I'm struggling with now is just accepting the things out of my control. <laughs> accepting that everything is not what I wanted it to be and what I pictured in my head it would be and accepting what it really is and trying to move forward. It's really, really, really hard. I went through a journey last September. I don't really know exactly when, but I struggled very, very, very much with severe depression. And it was so bad to the point where I was in the hospital. And that's a whole different story I want to share at a different time. I'm still waiting to, till I feel like I'm ready to share that story. Um, I feel like I feel myself falling back into that rabbit hole of severe depression. I feel like once you've experienced it, you're never going to really escape it. And you kind of have to just learn how to power through it and do whatever it is for you that helps you get through it. I don't feel like anything helps me, honestly. I Medication doesn't ever feel like it's, it helps me. Um... My body has this weird thing with anything, soap, facial cleanser, hair products to where after so long, my body just stops letting it work. And then it does that with medications. I will have a depression, antidepressant that will work for so long and then just stop. I don't want to get into all of that. My, my main points I want to hit in this video is mental illness is so real. And if you have people around you who deal with it and you might need to reevaluate how you're reacting to them or treating them because of it because you don't understand it this is your sign because i'm not gonna lie growing up i went through a lot of things a lot of trauma i feel like most people do and i didn't know how to process it but i always had a way of finding my way out of it i never understood people who wanted to unalive themselves i never understood that i never understood when i was younger why anybody could ever feel so bad that they couldn't get out of bed I didn't understand it ever, like through high school. I never got that till I went through so much things back to back that I understand it way too well now. All of it, all the things I didn't understand, I understand them quite well. You have to open yourself up to understand mental illness, especially if you're not experiencing it. If there's somebody around you, a girlfriend, a boyfriend, a best friend, a mother, a daughter, something that is experiencing it and you don't understand it, the best thing to do right now is to try to understand it because they already feel alone. They already feel like nobody gets them, that everybody judges them, that nobody feels their pain, nobody cares about them. I mean, there's just so many things you could say. When you're depressed, you don't always know why you're depressed. And when people treat you a certain way instead of kind of just being by your side, it's hard. And no way am I saying that people should use a depression as a crutch, as I feel like some people do. Um, depending on the circumstances, I try sometimes when I'm going through something to not blame it on that, to try to like say, am, am I, is this me? Am I really doing this because I'm depressed or am I just allowing myself to be lazy and blame it on my depression? Like sometimes I have to talk with myself, like, and, and, and evaluate my own actions. Um, but don't be so hard on yourself because you can be your own worst enemy sometimes. But also don't surround yourself with people who are going to make you feel bad. And if they're people that you really love and that you enjoy your bond with, then try to have them understand what you're going through. And it's not always hard to verbalize. So however you need to help them understand, try to help them. I have several people in my life who don't get what I go through. They tell me I'm too old to feel the way I feel, that I'm grown, that I shouldn't cry, that I am manipulating them because of my emotions, which... I in no way try to manipulate anybody. If anybody feels some type of way towards me, I really don't try to tell them, well, you can't feel that way because I'm depressed or you can't feel that way because I'm emotional. Like, I always try to tell people this is going to sound bad, but this is how I feel in this particular situation. I really hate when people try to put words in my mouth or try to 
pretend like they know what I'm doing or make me out to be this bad person because I don't really know how to always interact. Which I'm working on myself every day. I'm not blaming the world for not understanding people with mental illness, but there are a very big realm of people who just don't care to understand and they treat certain people who struggle with it the wrong way. And it's time for us to treat each other the right way. However that looks. I'm not a scientist, a psychologist, a therapist, but I can just speak from my experiences. Another thing is, if you struggle heavily with mental illness, and even if you don't, it is very important, especially as an adult who works, and if you work full time, or if you work a lot, if you're a single parent, whatever it is, it is very important to take breaks. Do not allow your job to be more important than you. Do not allow your job to be more important than your mental health. Even if you work in healthcare, because a lot of times we put everything aside to care for our patients and our people that we are caring for. And it is very important that you take care of yourself because there's no way you can fully do your job if you're going through so much up here. It'll affect you physically. It'll affect your sleep. It'll really affect you. So the best thing for you, especially if you're somebody who is subject to mental illness and you struggle with it and you struggle with it severely, is to remember to take a break. Today, starting today, well, technically starting tomorrow, I have four days off of work. It doesn't seem like it's that many days, but that's a big, that's a big, big deal for me. I never take a vacation. I take about one vacation a year. Um, it seems like I'm always in Florida visiting my family, but it's not always a vacation when I go. Sometimes I'm babysitting, which I definitely don't mind. Little kids are my escape from the world. I love just being in a kid's world because then it takes me back to just not even thinking about all my adult responsibilities, even though the person that I'm babysitting is my responsibility, but that's hard to explain. Um, being around my family is, being around anybody, even if it's your family, even if it's not people who treat you wrong, it's still mental exhausting because you have to pretend you're okay because you don't want to bring everybody else down. It's, that's a whole story for a different day. I'm taking an actual vacation where I'm not going to be doing anything. Probably cleaning my room because it is a very big disaster. Um, <laughs> which, what's new? Um, doing laundry, cleaning my room, kind of doing some self-care things that I've kind of let fall under the rug because of depression and just being super busy between school and work I just never have time to do anything anymore and then it makes me so tired and then on top of just everything that I deal with mental health wise like there's just this pile of things um I really 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 feel like it's important that you take a break and I feel like this is your sign if you're watching this that if you're just spread yourself so thin the holidays are over it's time to de-stress I'm not one of those people that goes, this year, this new coming year, I'm going to make all these New Year's resolutions. I'm trying to make resolutions for my life all through the year, not just January 1st. So I think it's really important to take a break for yourself. Take a, Even if it's just a day, even if it's just nine hours or it's 15 minutes, you have to find that time for yourself. And then when you get that time to take several days, you should definitely jump on that. And don't feel guilty for it. Do not, especially if it's with a job. Do not, because you need that time. You can't perform at your job if you are not at your best. I, I fully believe in that, and I it's really hard for me to take off from work because I work in it with Alzheimer's, and making them smile and them feel loved and comforted is what I live and breathe for. I love doing that. But there's days where I find myself getting short with the residents, where I find myself being very impatient, and it's because I need a break, a mental break. I work with memory care, which is you have to really have your mind and body like in a certain way to really interact with memory care patients. It's very hard because it is, it is very taxing. Like it is, it is very hard on you mentally because you have to really put yourself in a completely state of mind when you're around people dealing with memory issues. And I love the field that I work in, that I get to go and be around those people because they might not remember who you are and they probably couldn't tell you your name and they'll probably ask you the same question and tell you the same story over and over again throughout the day. But as soon as you're not there for however many days and you come back, something clicks and they'll be like, 
where were you? Or I was looking for you. Like, it's so crazy how it works. The brain is amazing. But anyway, take a break. Take time to breathe. Take time to relax. Take time for yourself. And don't feel guilty for wanting me time. Don't feel like it's selfish. It is very important to do. And I haven't done in a very long time. I have been trying to force myself to be the best, best friend because my best friend went through something really crazy. And I try to force myself to be there for her and force myself to try to make her happy. And in the in the midst of that, I kind of overdid it for myself. And I kind of put myself last. And I, I don't regret it, but like I need to kind of find myself again. Um, every day I put all of myself into my job, into not reacting to things, not with the residents, but with coworkers and, and management, not reacting to things that I feel like are wrong. And just, I just today, knowing that I was about to be off for four days, it was hard to get through my day at work. I'm like, there's so much that was happening and triggering me. I'm like, I have to get through this day and I have four days to recuperate and then I can hopefully go back with a clear mind, hopefully. That's why I'm not taking any vacation. I'm not going or doing anything. I'm going to stay home. And I told my friend when she asked me what I was gonna be doing, I said, I'm going to sleep because my sleep schedule is so crazy. But I don't know if I'll really do that, probably. But my first thing on my list is to just relax and do absolutely nothing. And I'm gonna spend my time how I wanna spend it. I don't care who doesn't like it because that's what I was trying to talk about in the beginning. I'm just so over caring about what people think of me anymore. It has nothing to do with going into the new year. Just coincidentally, it the day after Christmas and during Christmas weekend and even the week leading up to Christmas, I was like, I just want to get through Christmas, have a happy holiday. And then I really have to kind of hone in on my mind and what I'm feeling and how to process it. Anyway, that's all I have for today. Just a mental health update and advice from my experience. Nobody has to take it. Nobody has to listen to me, but that is what it is. I'm sorry, you went out of here. <laughs> That's it. I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Share your stories below. Advice with getting through mental illness. We can help each other because it is a very hard world out here when you are dealing with, dealing with severe depression. Peace out.